All right, we finished scene two. Save the game. Uh, let's go into balance really quickly because we, I don't know what escape means. Uh, we'll, we'll have it be power and escape because defense doesn't seem that helpful. Power, escape, power, escape. It actually might be useful to just have some of these be set to middle, but this is good. Uh, status. Oh, we have these like mech reference things. Let's look at these. Cage's LEV. The LEV, G LEV used by Cage in his escape from Bonaparte 3. Higher grade than the average LEV, it is equipped with Farsty, the AI, who is a source of support to the inexperienced Cage. Caliburnus. LEV used by BIS. Contains stronger defense structures than the average LEV, but a bit sluggish. Ability to attack and or serve as a backup support unit. Name means steel in Latin. Uh, security Force Lev A, Category Lev. Slightly older model LEV for Security Force use. Features handgun for close combat. Black Frame. Mystery machine that destroyed Bonaparte, the spine of which is a bony structure reminiscent of a bird's wing. Completely black, conjures up images of the devil. Dryzen. LEV used by BIS. Better at long range sniper style shooting than the average LEV. Dreizen is a nickname meaning 13 in German. Official name, Torador. Blade. Tanker used by BIS, designed as a means of transporting various goods. Maintenance resources on board. Moderate defensive capabilities, but inadequate for combat. Security LEVB, slightly older model LEV for security force use. Features machine gun for mid-range combat. What's character, is this just for characters? <laughs> Cage Midwell, male, 17 years old, blood type O, just like me. I'm O negative, I'm a universal donor. A kind-hearted, gentle youth, began working on board the Bonaparte III along with Ares, whom he met a year earlier. Born 17 years ago to an unknown mother on the cargo deck of the Midwell, which was smuggling illegal immigrants, Cage was raised on the ship by the captain who took the boy under his wing. Though he was treated well by fellow Midwell staff, Cage always harbored a feeling of loneliness and isolation in his heart which translated into low self-esteem and overly passive behavior. See, this all sounds really weird because he doesn't seem that passive and he doesn't seem to have low self-esteem. When the captain died in Midwell was deemed unfit for flight, Cage boarded the Bonaparte III, where he met Ares. His new friendship with this boy who was the same age as him and yet seemed so mature had a profound effect on Cage and helped him recover from his psychological wounds. However, the knowledge that he owes his rebirth to Ares has proven problematic in itself as Cage depends on Ares entirely and suspects that he will never be able to exist independently of him. This music slaps super hard. This music is really good. Gray says high evasion rating, but low defense in exchange. As long as it makes evasion fast, then I'm good. Cause I will never get hit as long as I don't need to deal with being on that screen for very long. Ares Anduva. 17 years old, blood type AB. He's not a universal donor. A co-worker of Cage aboard the Bonaparte III, a colonist spacecraft linking Earth and Mars. Having already worked on Bonaparte III for four months when Cage first boarded a year earlier, Ares showed Cage the ropes. Something of a genius. The normally taciturn Ares met Cage late one night after work when he was playing a piano that he had conjured by altering a program on a PC in the ship's lobby. Cage happened upon his impromptu concert and was so moved that he began talking to him. At first, Ares was irked by the intrusion, but he eventually gave in uh, to Cage's perseverance and found himself, much to his own surprise, becoming Cage's friend and looking after him. Fellow Bonaparte staff dubbed the unlikely pair the eighth wonder of Bonaparte. Fiona Alderin, female, 17 years old, blood type A. A mysterious girl found hiding in a storage room on board the Bonaparte III. Since the accident involving the unidentified object, she sticks with Cage and his group. Having suffered through retrograde amnesia since the incident, what little personal information is known of Miona has been pieced together based on occasional hints about her past. 
Though she sometimes hints at a determined and headstrong personality hidden deep inside, she is shy and rarely acts aggressively. Serious, yet somehow flighty, she also seems slightly imbalanced, which may have something to do with her loss of memory. Farsty. The navigation program installed in the vehicle boarded by Cage and Miona immediately following the Bonaparte 3's collision with the unidentified object. In these days, when voice-activated OSs are a dime a dozen, he or she is special, incorporating highly advanced technology not found in other programs found on LEVs. What secrets could possibly lie hidden in its creation? Semil, Shambro, female, 16 years old, blood type O. A robust girl who, for some reason, speaks in street slang, constantly aware of the fact that she is short, has a love-hate relationship with Rosma. Although she grew up in an orphanage, she displays the healthy outgoingness of someone who had a very happy childhood. In reality, her childhood was difficult, having been subject to ender prejudice by humans from Earth. Join the resistance early to regain respect for herself, and also to help ensure a happier future for her siblings at the institution. Lost a friend recently to some trouble associated with a romantic relationship with an Earthling human. A responsible big sister at the orphanage, underneath it all, she's just a sensitive 16-year-old. Is this the person that the, the lady loved? Interesting. Rosma, male, 19 years old. Okay, so that is a guy. Uh, blood type A. The skirt-chasing troublemaker of the BIS. He is surprisingly reliable where it counts. Somewhat childish, but also remarkably perceptive. Sometimes perceptive sometimes. A gifted sharpshooter with excellent hearing and eyesight seems to have a thing for Semmel, but nothing is materialized as of yet. His only family is his sick mother, who tells him that his father was... Ah! Uh... Tells him that his father was a high-profile earthling. However, they have never spoken with one another. Obsessed with the idea of the father he never met, he may have found a paternal figure in Dexon. Okay, I can do this. Phil Bright, male. Male! 17 years old. Blood type AP. Full name... Philbright West Riverside Warehouse Rock 26. Huh. I, this is like the, wasn't there a character in the last game named like Thunder Rock or something? Like just a very weird name. Warehouse Rock is, is the particularly silly part of this. Excels in household chores such as cooking, cleaning, and laundry. Easily frazzled because of his long ribboned blonde hair and his high-pitched voice, he is often mistaken for a girl. Gotcha. He's th this game came out in 2001, so this was the era of uh, of this type character, this archetype, uh, which was uh, weirdly common at the time. And of course, things have changed now. Uh, whereas, like in the, the obvious example that comes to mind is Bridget in the original Guilty Gears, who has since come out as trans, which is wonderful. Um, but yeah, the this archetype, this is a relic of the 2000s. <laughs> because of his long, beribboned blonde hair and his high-pitched voice, he's often mistaken for a girl. Phil owes his long name to his father, who believed the old superstition that luck comes to people with long names. He grew up in a happy family among many unrelated siblings, but tragedy struck one day when his father sampled a medication which induced a sudden fit of insane violence. Is that a thing? <laughs> Confused and horrified, Phil was able to defend himself from the savage attack, but when he came back to his senses, his entire family, including his father, was dead. The manufacturer of the medicine attempted to cover up the incident and lay the blame on Phil, at which Dexon rescued the unfortunate youth and took him under his wing. So he's a Bridget archetype who went through extreme trauma and violence? That's interesting. That's also really common from the time. This guy, this guy seems like an elfin lead character. <laughs> Now a BIS member, uh, member support officer, he has a crush on Miona. Is that right? Dexon. 42 years old, Dexon Geese, uh, or Geisa, 42 years old, blood type O. Founder and father figure of BIS. Believing that he merely lent a hand to the Mars resistance movement, he does not realize the full extent of his influence in Martian politics, although he would gladly give his life to support the cause. A family man, he used to be an officer in the UNSF, where he enjoyed moderate success, but was divorced by his wife due to his long work hours. Having lost his main motivation in life and besieged with guilt over his participation in the Enders, he left the UNSF and began to research the strange goings-on brought by Earthlings, earning him both friends and foes along the way. His support base continued to grow and eventually formed BIS. 
it's really interesting. This is really interesting, right? Because so so far this conflict is really intriguing. And in the people who've just been watching the series won't know this de like the the nuance of these details exactly, but like the this story is ostensibly about the UNSF versus the Martians, right? There is a war that broke out between Bahram and the UNSF. This is the backdrop of all of the conflict that's going on. The reason why this war broke out, in part, is due to the fact that, that the UNSF is brutally oppressive to uh, the Ender population, and specifically the Martians. Um, Idolo, the OVA prequel, literally opens on uh, a UNSF commander with high jurisdiction um, hitting a Martian so hard he cracks his skull open because Martians have been, um, because they grew up in space, their bones are lower density and they're weaker than Earthlings. So the UNSF is not good. They're very bad and the Martians are 100% absolutely justified to fight against them and to try to, to get out of the oppression of the Earthlings because the Earthlings are trying to control all the colonists and are horribly racist to them. The thing is, is that exposure to Metatron in the orbital frames has caused some of the Martians, it, it basically caused the first frame runner, uh, a man named Rodham Levins, to, uh, to kind of lose his mind. Uh, and... Of course, he took it too far, which is like kind of a dumb storytelling trope, but it is it is a thing. That's a thing that happened. Uh, so in Zone of the Enders, though, the, the first Zone of the Enders game, we see the culmination of that conflict, at least in some instances, uh, happening on the Jupiter colony, because as we learned, Metatron comes from Jupiter. The Bahram forces are trying to take over a colony, they kill a bunch of people, which is bad, but also Leo becomes aligned with the UNSF. This game immediately aligns us with the Martians again, not the UNSF. In fact, the UNSF seems to be the antagonist in this game. So this franchise is doing the interesting storytelling thing of like making it like forcing us to see multiple perspectives and not just painting one of them as, as horribly evil. Bahram is probably really bad. I mean, they're they're an insurgent force, basically. But like the rebel Martian factions do exist and are interesting. It's just neat. Whereas the UNSF is very evil, too, even though they're ostensibly fighting against Bahram. There's just like there's like a weird realistic geopolitics thing going on here. Where it's like, yeah, some people are really bad, but they protect the status quo because it's better than like subjecting themselves to a revolution that could lead to even worse oppression under different circumstances or like a more brutal regime, which is weird. Like, it's just weird to see a game be that nuanced. I mean, and granted, the nuance is kind of subtle in that it's it's still like a silly anime game, but the fact that it's like doing silly anime on both sides of the conflict is really intriguing. Nadia. Can, so Nadia Condito, female, 19 years old, blood type A, one of the one of Bolazov's assistants, as well as his mistress. Ew. The fact that the Martian hating Bolazov keeps her at his side leads her to believe Leads her to believe, mistakenly, that Balasov recognizes her talent and loves her. A hardworking and earnest military employee. Tim Fraser, male 38, blood type A. Mars Army officer. Looks older than his years due to endless problems with the resistance, which may have something to do with his being forever single. No star qualities, but a nice guy nonetheless. Has caught the BIS leader Dexon on a number of occasions, but has never been able to keep him as one half-brother. Alright, that was a whole lot of stuff. Terminology? Golly. Nut. Neredium Universal Technology, major conglomerate which began its space development program in the early 21st century, the largest manufacturer of LEVs, as well as the inventor of the orbital frame. Headquarter currently located on Neredium County, Mars. 
Metatron. Considered one of the two greatest discoveries in space development along with the LEV, this mineral ore was found on Callisto, a moon of Jupiter, in the early 21st century, widely researched and applied in a number of different fields. Metatron Computer. An enormous improvement upon the previously popular von Neumann digital computer, this quantum computer, which incorporates Metatron-based integrated circuits, is both compact and exceedingly quick. Memory and programs are managed on a single, constantly changing set of circuits, so that both of these operations take place simultaneously and constantly. In terms of quantum physics, it operates on a different dimension. Cage's Button. An outdated model of wearable player containing the recording of Ares' impromptu performance can be clipped onto one's garments for easy mobility and includes basic features such as playing, recording, and voice memo. That's gonna be a plot element. <laughs> debris, there's literally a glossary entry on debris. Floating space garbage comprised of satellites and other flotsam, very dangerous as it can move at speeds up to several kilometers per second. Handy PC, mobile device given a cage by Louis. Although small, it has the largest memory allocation in its class and can even play movies. See, that sounded, that, that would have been wild at the time, but isn't that wild now. United Nations Space Force military unit composed mainly of troops from Security Council member countries includes the Martian peacekeeping force under its jurisdiction. Special Task Force Asimos, unit of the UNSF under direct leadership of Zephyrs, composed chiefly of Earthlings who are specially anti-Ender. Arc jet engine, electric power source, used propulsion system and levs. Pandora Fredum, a region of Hellespontus, the location of the sphere which housed Semmel's orphanage. Okay. Ryan Corporation. Ranking a distant second after Nut in the tech in manufacturing industry. Okay. Anti-Terrestrial League BIS. Official name Born in Space, resistance group founded by Dex and Geisa. Uses a complex network of underground tunnels as its secret headquarters, supported by the Robin Foundation. Is there anything particular in here that seems useful? HBC, Hellasport Broadcasting, the largest broadcast network in Hellespontus, owned by Yukito's father. I don't know who Yukito is. Bahram, military unit composed of Martians living in Vasilia County. The orbital frame was developed as an anti-Earth weapon in Vasilia County, where anti-Earth sentiment is stronger than anywhere else on Mars. Vasilia County, home of Bahram. Robin Foundation, patron of BIS. Having donated 90% of BIS capital, the foundation is actually just a front for an elusive underground group, which while not an official corporation, boasts impressive financial connections and influence. Also supports other groups besides BIS. Malgalitafel. Okay, refers to Mar Malgalitafel County, the central county on Mars. Interesting. I don't think any of this needs to be explained. Yeah, this is just different areas. What's a nest? gathering of spheres okay what's a sphere dome encapsulated city okay there we go <laughs> that only took us a little while to figure out technology in which metatron to considerably reduce fuel consumption anti-proton reactor orbital frame owes its smallness lightness and power to this concept animus psychology term refers to deeply repressed masculine traits in females zephyrs uses the term as a code name for his new invention there's gender happening the ucm the united colonies of mars Congregation of County Representatives on Mars, there are a total of 16 counties which corresponding to a country on Earth and with each its own governing body. The Board of Politicians makes decisions concerning the counties as a whole, such as the use of UC dollars as currency. We're probably good. All right, uh, that took forever. That's fine. I just wanted to upgrade that thing a little bit. Uh, garage, fortify weapon. Fortify part. That should be good. Next stage. Hmm. Whoa, I never knew this place existed. Would it matter? Are you a Martian? You've never been here. Did you sleep well? Oh, good morning. I just realized I hadn't introduced myself yet. I'm... Cage, right? The girl is Miona, and the one who saved you both was Ares. Huh? That's right. 
You heard us talking. I've told everyone here about you, so there's nothing to fear. This is the headquarters of the Anti-Terrestrial League BIS. As long as you're here, the UNS can't, UNSF can't get to you. Ah, is that so? So I guess that would make you a t t terrorist hmm. I don't much enjoy being labeled like that, but I suppose from an Earthling's perspective, that's the way it looks. It was easy to guess the, the next word before I switch, because like what else would what else would come come after that? Oh my god, what do I do? They don't seem like bad people, but Ares always says not to judge a book by its cover. Um, cage, right? That's not the kind of thing you should be- you should verbalize. Huh? Was I talking aloud just now? Yep, loud and clear. <laughs> Good morning, everyone's up so early. Well, hello there, princess. Well, hello there, princess! Sleep well? I wish R Razma has a has a CDI Link voice now in my mind. Yes, I did. What's up? You're late. You sleep too much. You always so grouchy in the morning. Want me to knock you back to sleep? Unfortunately, my grandma taught me never to hit a girl. Oh, so now I'm a girl. I get it. In that case, ow! What what was that for? <laughs> What's with the raised fist? Your beliefs are pretty shaky, huh? Yeah, what you doing? I amended my policy just now and decided that those who are female only by anatomy do not qualify as female. Again, interesting. Interesting, because that implies that anatomy has nothing to do with gender and he would he would be perfectly fine with uh with with uh trans women, which is good. That's good. This game's doing a progressive. Let's see if that maintains. Let's see if this 2001 anime game is actually progressive. Oh, I'm gonna show you. Good morning, Cage. Some nice things, but shall we call it a day, Mr. Rosma? Hello, Aries. May I call you Aries? I'm Semmel, Semmel Shampro. Enchanted. Did you sleep well last night? Mr. Dexon, I took the liberty of giving myself a tour of the facilities. It's very impressive indeed. Dang, boy just ignored me completely. Whatever. Never expected nothing anyway. Well, thank you. I'm flattered. Oh, wrong person. Well, thank you. I'm flattered. Where is the blonde gentleman from yesterday? Hmm? Oh. Mr. Philbright. Eh? He's out running some errands right now, but you'll have a chance to get acquainted later. Now that our three guests are all here, I'd like to have a little chat. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Boss! It's an emergency! Speak of the devil. Back so soon? How was Yukito? Well, he was doing very well, and that's not what I was trying to tell you. There's been an emergency. The UNSF is raiding the hospital. Did they find out that he's staying there? That doesn't sound too good. Nah, that's real bad. That's not a real concern, as they completely overlooked two men, Mr. Yukito and myself. Men? He's a he? I was convinced he was a girl. Oops, gotta pay attention. I mean, of all ways to respond to that, it's nice that he's like, hmm, I should have corrected myself and been better about it. That's, um, huh, 2001, y'all. Their interest in the hospital seems to have something to do with new pharmaceutical they're, t they're using on patients in critical condition. Huh. So they're planning on stealing it and selling it at a higher price. That's kind of a jump. <laughs> That's kind of a jump. There's only one person I can think of who would do something like that. Well, again, that's just an assumption, but... Mm-hmm. Ned Noahim. That filthy cretin with the powerful friend. There's no time to waste. Come on, we have to get moving, Cage. I'd like you to come with me for assistance. Me? Um... Okay... A hopeless hope. Hey, don't think I don't know that the terrorists in here... You hand him over now. There's no such person here. 
Besides, even if we, uh, even if there were such a person, I would never hand over a patient. Please leave. Oh, what have we got here? They've got some good looking babes for nurses at this joint. You should take advantage. Go on, have some fun. What do you think you're doing? Nothing to worry about, old man. We'll be gone as soon as you deliver. Depending on how nice the chicks are to my boys. <laughs> you dirtbag. I said, stop that. This is my hospital, and I won't tolerate. Ugh. Watch your tone. We just got back from space, and we're really tired. You know? We just want to be pampered by some hotties and white is all. Just a little pampering. <laughs> Ugh. Stop messing around. There's a patient out there who needs this immediately. Pfft. What do you want from me? This darn thing doesn't work. Huh. I wonder why. Huh. Let me think a little more. Oh, I know. It's broken. Oh, well. Ah, uh, no. You're right. Something is wrong. We can't have this. We need to fix this as soon as possible. Who the heck are you? Where did you come from? I've never seen anything this bad. Don't worry. I can fix you. This might... No, this is going to hurt. Whoops, sorry. I just got a little something myself. And my self-control isn't where it should be. You. This is the UNSF you're dealing with. You regret this. Aw, uh, I thought giving it a kick would set it right, but that thing's busted beyond repair. Well... That takes care of that, so need anything else? Never one for subtlety, eh, Yukito? <laughs> this is no time to be resting peacefully. Who are... It doesn't matter. Thank you both so much. Now I must get going to transport this medicine to the hospital. There's a good possibility that they're already waiting on the hospital. If you can trust us, we'd like to deliver it for you. Could you trust us? Are you by any chance? Yes, please take it. Thank you. Don't worry, we'll see to it that it's delivered safely to the hospital. As for you, find a safe place to hide. Please make sure it gets there. There are many people waiting for it. What are you? We're not terrorists. I wanted you to see that for yourself. Look, the ra they raid the hospital, prevent the distribution of the medicine, and endanger the well-being of the patients who need it. This is what Earth does. We're trying to stop them. That's why we want your help. You have the power to make things better. Cage, let's help them. They saved us. So it's our turn to save someone. I have to say I disagree with what the Earthlings are doing. You're right. If that's how everybody feels, okay. I don't know if I can be of any help, but I'd like to try. That's great news. Thank you. Now, boss, the idiot's nowhere to be found. I've asked Erasma to take care of some other business. Our priority now is to release the hospital and restore its safety. Come, we must deliver the medicine. Put away the LEVs. Huh? Is that a commotion I hear outside? Hmm, I have my men outside taking care of that area, so I can afford to have my fun in here. I guess we just can fight. Where the heck are we? Huh. Oh, here we go. We need the repair units to be basically as far forward as possible because they can't move very far. This thing's gonna move slowly too. Phase end. All right, first turn over. Come and get me, losers. I'm excited to destroy all of these baddies. This is going to be multi a multiple turn setup mission, which is kind of annoying. I have a feeling this 
uh, soundtrack is gonna get kind of old, but. This is so slow. Mmm, that was so close to a crit. That's not a laser sword, that's a big kick. Uh, that was not intentional. That's fine. Is that everyone? I basically just allowed them to target one of my... Yeah. My weaklings. That's fine. Oh, it's Dexens. <laughs> Instant. Lorp. Alright, let's... Oh. Um, I have to use these units that I don't know anything about. No! Okay, that's fine. I'm gonna get more practice with this unit. No! I wish that I could see like the cadence of their attacks. Oh my god, it's so hard to control. Nice. Okay. Ah, uh, I thought I got it. Oh well. It still does good damage. How I can't see how much experience I need for more. Oh! 150 millimeter cannon? Some Helldiver shit. Let's go. I think I might have gotten it that time because the edge was in it. No. Nope. Alright, well, that would have been sick. You can't attack on the same turn as move. So we go over here and we wait. And we move here and wait. And we're good. Okay. Phase end. This is a really interesting active. Just active tactics game. God damn it. There's, so there's a way to turn off that IAS, so I'm, I'm confused about what that means, because does it, does it just turn it into like a statistical chance that it will hit? There you go. Oop, avoid. Yep, now they're all in a straight line, this will be easy. Nope. Ouchie. All right. That would be so much easier with an analog stick, but alas. All right. This should kill, right? Yep. Nice. Oh, no! <laughs> That's fine. All right, perfect. Oh, fuck, I missed. 
No, no, I didn't. It's like actually genuinely tough to to hit. You should have stayed away, but no, you have to come and spoil my fun. Uh, could you be that impudent terrorist group I've been hearing about? I'll dispose of you myself. There's more of them. He seems like the leader. Please stop this. Why are you doing this? There are people who are suffering. Shut your mouth. I don't care how many Martians die. Let me give you a little tip. All kinds of evidence can be fabricated. Don't forget, it's the Martians, not us, who are in the wrong. They were even saying that on the news yesterday. What? Does he know something about Bonaparte? Huh. Have I seen you before? Never mind. If you still want to get in my way, fine. It'll be the cold-hearted evil terrorists breaking and entering a hospital to steal medicine, and innocent patients getting an instant upgrade from sick to death. <laughs> what kind of person? Huh? Is that Morse code? Um, buy time. Buy time. Okay, ready? I'm pulling the trigger. Aha. Uh -huh. So Earth monkeys have no guts and like to pick on defenseless people, huh? What? You shouldn't have said that. That'll be the end of you. <laughs> what? A sniper? So you really did work on a ship, huh? You were testing me. Don't take it personally. I do it to everyone. Uh, how dare you? Uh, I could have repaired. That's fine. Gray says, I uh, start moving in circles to dodge. I mean, I'll try. I don't, I don't dislike it. I, I think it's a cool system. I just haven't really... I haven't figured out the perfect solution yet. All right, here we go. Oh, I can't attack. What the heck? There we go. All right, no one. Oh, this guy can attack though. Attack, let's see, grenade. I have six ammo. Let's just do this. Nope. Oh, so he can't move and attack either? Or do I have to be like... Nope. All right. Let's just attack. Ugh, I fucked that up. That's fine. That's fine. All right, upgrade, yay. Gray says, my bad. It's just that in later scenes, you'll have to dodge a lot. Yeah, I mean, I figured I would. I didn't I didn't take it in any, any weird way. I was just explaining like, it, it's it is less to do with me not knowing or not liking the system and, and more just feeling it out You know trying to understand exactly What I'm supposed to do Oh well, my, my actual issue is that like because it's a d-pad, right? I push right on the d-pad and it's it's not analog so it, it doesn't matter how long I'm holding it down it's like a set acceleration, which is really difficult to aim. Sure, let's try this. Get dunked on, dude. You haven't seen the last of me. I won't rest until each and every one of you is buried six feet deep. Completely unoriginal and tired threat registered. <laughs> oh, I thought he looked familiar. Plan 261. I gotta let the old man know. Did I just not deliver to the hospital? 
Oh, I guess it, it auto counted. I don't mean to be rude, but please don't ever come again. Hey, we're the ones. We understand. Thank you for your cooperation. Bro, it's possible that innocent civilians get hurt because of us. What Ned said isn't completely off base. Sad, but true. I do appreciate what you've done, but I have patience I must tend to. Yes, we apologize for what... Oh, wrong person. Yes, we apologize for what happened. We'll be going now. Doing different voices is so tiring. It makes my it makes me so sleepy. That was kind of sad, wasn't it? I mean, we helped the hospital. There's no applause when we win. If we lose, we're just called terrorists. But we gotta do what we gotta do. Resistance. I get it. You're from the resistance. <laughs> you finally understand. Cage, right? I've heard all about you all. I'm Yukito. Nice to meet you. Pleased to meet you too. My first name is Tadamichi, but even so, call me Yukito, even though it's my last name. <laughs> uh, that is not true. That is not true. That's not true. His name, his name is Tadamichi Yukito, I think. I do not think it is Yukito Tadamichi. Tadamichi is a last name and Yukito is a first name. He's just explaining it in family order. That... I don't think that makes sense. <laughs> uh, okay. He's kind of strange. So I the 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 translation there is is going to be a little bit weird because I mean I guess Tadamichi could be a first name. That's a really weird first name and Yukito is a really weird f last name in Japanese. Uh hmm. That's odd. I think what they did is just not translate the the context, though, which is like he's basically saying, like, you, you can be casual with me. You can call me my first name. It's OK. But in English, that doesn't make sense. So I don't know, because in English, we just call people by their first names all the time. I'm glad that everyone's safe, and Cage, you did a great job. Thank you. The atrocities that take place on Mars at the hands of Earthlings are often covered up. Facts are distorted, and the Earth-serving media only aggregate matters. Aggravate matters. Furthermore, the crimes committed by the UNSF and the disregard given to our human rights will not come to an end anytime soon. We didn't pick up our guns because we were angry with political ideology. We merely protect the lives and basic rights of people. That is what we're here to do. For merely protecting, it's my impression that your facilities are quite impressive. Of course. We couldn't have done it on our own. We have a supporter to whom we owe much of what we have. While we are mainly a defense force at the moment, there will surely come a day when we'll have to attack. But the most important thing is to make people see that we have the capacity to do so. Just because one person is weaker doesn't mean that it is right for another to stomp all over him just because he can. Fellow space-born humans. Ah. B.I.S. Born in space. It's very simple but clear. Uh, just a note as well, right? Ares. Mysterious white-haired guy who probably pilots the evil mech. Uh, at least it looked like he did in the silhouette that we saw. Uh, has an ear piercing and plays piano and is friends with the uh, unfortunately um, low self-esteem main character. He's he's just he's just Kaoru. He's just Kaoru. That's it. That's all. <laughs> yeah, I like it. We will not tolerate any more suffering. Even the Bonaparte that you came in on fell victim to this unrest. There were innocent families on that ship. Families. Miona, did you remember something? I... There was something. Father. Mother. Fire. Lots of fire, just burning. Go on. Er, wrong person. Go on, you can do it. 
How patronizing. <laughs> together, we were together. But all of a sudden, nobody... Forgive me, it wasn't my fault. But I... Nothing. Anything. I couldn't do anything. No! Miona! Miona! Feeling better? Cage was real worried about you. I don't know myself at all. I can't take this. Who am I? I had to save someone. I... I had to save someone, but I don't know who. Easy, Miona. We'll check it out for you. We'll check it out for you. It's all good. Nothing to stress about. We all got things in our past we want to forget about, you know? Things you want to forget? That's right. Can't forget even if you want to. Memory can be real troublesome to deal with. It ain't all bad if you look at it that way. Miona, if you can't remember, just forget about it. If you're still feeling like you gotta know, if you can't move on without remembering, I'll help you find the answers. So just take it easy and go with the flow, all right? Okay, thank you. All right. So scene, what was it, scene three? Down. Not bad.